Finally, it is time to put everything together. Laser diode, Arduino, ESP32, PS4 controller, and servo motors. With all of this, I can make something that looks like a laser turret. But there are a few things that I need to do first. So let's get to it. I have all the components prepared. The laser diode with driver circuit that can be switched on by Arduino. Serial communication between ESP and Arduino. With DualShock support and two servo motors. To bring it all together, I need to expand on the serial communication code so I can send more data, send controller inputs from ESP to Arduino and then process them so I can control servos and laser diode, then connect servos to Arduino and finally make a provisional frame that would complete the first working version of a laser turret. I also want to clean up my code and make it easily expandable in the future. That's why I made a block diagram to organize tasks and see exactly what needs to be done. Arduino is connected with everything. It receives data from ESP32 and ESP communicates with a PS4 controller via Bluetooth. Orange lines are power going from the AC adapter and in the future through a power supply board. Entire laser assembly and two servo motors will be movable, so I place them into moving parts section. There are three things that need to be done. First, I can read inputs from the controller, left analog X axis value, Y axis value and X button state. I need to send them through a serial communication to Arduino, but the last time I tried it, there was a delay between button press and laser diode turning on. Today I will try to make it faster. Second, after Arduino receives data, it needs to be processed and then used to control servo motors. Laser control is mostly done, but the code can be cleaned up. And finally, I can put everything together to make the first version of my laser turret. For now, I don't want to invest in parts, since soon it all will be redesigned to accommodate more systems. I have an idea how to make it. We'll see if it works. Now it is the time to start working. Previously I was able to use controller inputs to turn on and off my laser diode. The problem was that it had a 1 second delay. With only a laser diode it was acceptable, but with two servo motors it is an issue. But I think that I found a way to fix it. I will be using the code made by Robin2, posted on Arduino forum in a thread called Serial Input Basics. My goal is to send three values, one or zero representing X button and two values between minus 128 and 127 representing X and Y axis of the left analog stick. Serial communication sends all data as a series of zeros and ones that can be interpreted by a receiving device. Since it is sent in a series, we can send for example two numbers at the same time. It sends the first number and only after the second number. Because of this, it depends on a baud rate and is relatively slow compared to Arduino's operating speed. So when serial data is sent, we need to wait for all of it, arriving one after another. If data is received as a first step, which in this case it is, all other functions have to wait. The more data is sent, the more time it takes to execute other functions. String of characters containing three numbers divided by commas is our data packet. I only need to send controller inputs when they can be used by Arduino. So when X button is not pressed or analog stick is not moving, I can assume that they represent zero. In this case no data needs to be sent and received. But analog sticks have a slight drift, usually not going beyond minus 20 and 20. So this is the condition of sending data packet to Arduino. I used serial print functions one after the other. You may notice that other than values and commas, it also sends two characters, start and end markers. 
And this is the second part of making it faster. We are done with ESP's side of communication. Now let's go to Arduino's side. It receives a data packet looking like this. Start marker, first value, comma, second value, comma, third value, end marker. And then it repeats. Using only serial read, it tries to receive data until memory or timer runs out. This causes significant delay to other functions and doesn't recognize when a send packet starts and ends. The code can be expanded, allowing for communication to end as soon as all important data is received. Now I'll be discussing parts of a code that I adapted from Serial Communication Basics. I think that I know what all of it does, but take it with a grain of salt. I suggest reading this thread to get more information about this topic. First, set up the number of bytes and character arrays, then variables and new variable that will tell us if new data is sent. Standard serial setup, in the main loop, first is receive data function, variables for receiving data, putting characters in array, start and end marker, and reading serial input. First pass. The condition is that there is a serial signal and new data is false, which it is at the beginning. Then serial read. If receive is in progress, it can go further, but at a first pass it is set to false. So below, it checks for a start marker and changes state of receive variable to true. We go back, new data is still false, so loop begins again. Now receive in progress is true after detecting a start marker. If a character is different from an end marker, it is put into an array. This continues until end marker is detected, then array ends, receiving ends, variable used for array placement resets, and new data is set to true. We can go back to the main loop, and with a new data execute the rest of it. This part makes a copy of our string. Then data is split into single tokens using commas as dividers. After that it is converted to integer. Then our data is presented in serial monitor. And in the end new data is set to false, so the entire process can begin again. I've tested it and it is very fast. With a few modifications I can add it to the main code. I connected everything together. For now, servos are powered through Arduino. I will change it later, when all systems are in place. In short, ESP is connected through logic level shifter to Arduino, laser driver MOSFET to pin 3 on Arduino, servos to pin 5 and 6, and all grounds are connected. At the beginning, I defined all variables. One new thing is software serial. Since Arduino Uno uses only pin 0 and 1 as serial pins, it can interface with communication through the USB port. That's why I set new serial pins at 12 and 13. Then serial setup, pin setup and attaching servos. Serial baud rate is higher than usual. The main loop is split into smaller loops. Data receiving and phrasing is at the beginning. I've only added one function to it, setting all data to zero when there is no signal. Then two servo loops, they are mostly the same. Only use different variables for x and y axis. Inside, I defined a new speed variable, which changes depending on how much the analog stick is smoothed. Basically, two speed settings working in both directions. Then, position is calculated through adding speed variable to current position. And the last is push button part. Everything here is the same. It works. But as always there are some new problems. Servo motors need faster baud rate. Then they move a lot better. But on the other hand, push button sometimes works and sometimes not. At a low baud rate, the push button is faster and does what it should, but servo motors don't move. For now I left it on the higher baud rate. I need to test the bouncing or sending different data than 0 or 1. The other problem is that servos sometimes move when they shouldn't. I think that it is caused by data phrasing being not accurate enough. Sometimes I can see that received values are different from the ones sent. It seems like turning entire string into usable parts can put dividing commas at wrong places. I have a few ideas how to deal with it, but that is something to do in the future. For now I want to fit all parts together, and since this design will be used only for testing, I want to make it as quick and as cheap as possible.
Arduino isn't only about coding and electronic components. After all, we have other parts in this project. As much as I would like to design and make a beautiful frame, it would be counterproductive at this stage. Before worrying about looks, we should focus on a more practical application. The plan is simple. Glue two servos together, so they can rotate in a different axis. Glue the laser board to one servo. Make a stable frame from a piece of wood and try to fix Arduino to it. I bought a 1 meter long wooden board and a few wood screws. You may ask how wide and thick it is. It doesn't matter, because I will eyeball all of it. I cut a small piece of this board, a bit longer than the width of a servo. Secured it using screws, then glued everything together. Then cut a one larger piece and two smaller pieces. Screw it all together and it is mostly done. Now I can secure all electronics on this side, connect cables, and officially the first iteration of Arduino laser turret is done. When testing it, I realized that it would be a good idea to write down all current problems with this design. So here is the list. There is too little space between frame and laser board. Serial communication still needs some improvements. Power supply requires expansion. And cables between stationary and moving parts need better connectors. At this stage of a project it is enough. We accomplished all major goals, found new problems and finally made something resembling a turret. With this phase 4 is completed and we can get to Phase 5 The last major piece of the project. Adding firepower. I don't feel comfortable making a high power laser, so two options are left. Air cannon shooting ping pong balls or something heavier. This means pneumatics, air pump, pressure tank and a bunch of electronic valves. Or the second option is an automatic crossbow, cord which can be rearmed using linear actuators, auto loading system, shooting foam darts or other projectiles. Both seem fun to make. Maybe one day I'll add a secondary weapon system. For now one needs to be chosen. And that is where you can decide. There should be a poll on my channel's community page where you can vote between those two options. I'm going to run it for two weeks from publication of this video. In case of indecisive results I will choose something by myself. You can also leave a comment down below with your questions and ideas. As always all parts and components are in the description as Amazon affiliate links. Subscribe and leave a like and see you in the next one.